Good morning, everybody. This morning, we're going to be talking about how I healed my relationship with the scale actually by weighing myself every single day. So this is going to be a little bit of a story, but I'm excited to share it with you guys. Um, and I am just channeling the Mickey and Minnie vibes this morning because I'm so excited to be going to Disney next week on a family vacation. So I won't be here with you guys live on IGTV next week because of that reason, but I'm so excited to be going. And uh, we are celebrating my daughter turning five years old and starting kindergarten. So we're doing the whole shebang. We are going to Cinderella's castle. We're going to three different theme parks. So hopefully I will be also posting about how to stay keto while you're at Disney. I've done it several times. I thought that that might be kind of fun to share with you guys. So yeah, that's something exciting that I have coming up next week. And also it is not sweater weather where I live here in Virginia Beach, but don't you just wanna do it anyway? So it's nice and cool in my house with the air conditioning and I'm channeling those fall vibes. I can't wait for fall and sweaters and pumpkin spice and all of those basic things that I totally love and I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get into it um, this morning, but I want to thank all of you guys who are tuning in, and for those of you who are listening later on the Self Care Keto Podcast, uh, for those tuning in on Instagram, did you know that I have a podcast? And I know that these videos can be kind of long sometimes, so that's why I love to post the audio later to my podcast. Um, I'm a big podcast listener myself. I would much rather listen than watch, so however you want to digest the content, go for it. I'm one of those people that puts my podcast podcast player on like 1.5 or 2x speed and it drives my husband completely nuts. He says it stresses him out, but I love it because I can um, take in more content even faster. So if you've never tried that, did you know you can speed up your podcast player? So go for that. All right. Um, for those of you who have listened to my podcast, the self-care keto podcast, I did an episode a, a long time ago, like over maybe about 15 months ago. It was right at the beginning of COVID. So March of 2020. And that episode was called why I threw my scale in the trash. So I did actually throw my scale away in the trash. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to live a life without weighing myself. Like that was something that I had been thinking about for a really long time. Um, I was at a weight that I felt comfortable with. So I was telling myself, why am I doing this to myself every day? But the truth was, is that it wasn't about weighing myself every day. It was about how weighing myself every day was actually impacting me. So it was not good. Um, now I've had a long history of struggling with my weight. I was overweight as a child. Um, I was, um, I received a lot of negative messaging about that from people who were probably well-meaning and trying to help me, but it had a very negative impact on me. It made me obsessed with food and weight and body image and determined my entire worth based upon that for most of my life. And I really also struggled with body dysmorphia, which is basically feeling like you are overweight, like truly believing that you are overweight or fat when you look at yourself, when in reality you are not, um, you are at a healthy weight. And that's how I felt for most of my life. Um, keto has been such a healing journey for me. And I won't go into all of that right now, except to say, um, that even though keto was so healing for me, I still found myself, um, basing, how I felt about myself every day um, based on that number on the scale. And it's hard to be honest about that and be vulnerable about that, especially because I am a weight loss coach for women. And, um, but I think that it's really powerful to be vulnerable about that because um, there's so many people that struggle with it. How can you be a woman and not struggle with that? Quite honestly, I wanna meet that woman because <laughs> we have been inundated with this messaging from the time that we've been little girls. We didn't ask to receive it. It's just been the air that we have breathed and it has to be so, so, so rare to find the woman who doesn't struggle with self-worth tied up in weight. And so actually throwing away my skill or getting rid of my skill was something that I was trying to do on a personal growth journey to eliminate that um, from my life, to to change that, to stop, to, to dismantle that limiting belief that there is any kind of self-worth tied up in the number on the scale. So that was why I actually went into it. Um, now, 
I did it at a very interesting time, March 2020, right at the beginning of COVID. And we were all uh, experiencing anxiety, uh, massive change. I also had just left my full-time job to finally pursue my coaching practice full-time. So I was in the middle of a massive personal transition, which also felt scary and insecure and all of these things. And um, letting go of something that had previously been like a comfort and control mechanism for me to be weighing myself every day was so challenging. Um, it was more challenging than I actually expected it to be. Um, I kind of had this idea in my head of like, oh, it's going to be so great. <laughs> you're not going to have to feel that way anymore every day. And you're just going to set yourself free and it's going to be awesome. And um, while I did expect it to be challenging, probably a little bit at first, I didn't expect what truly did happen, which was the, actually that I became even more obsessed with what I weighed because I didn't know what I weighed. Um, and I did share a little bit about this on my podcast previously, um, but I became even more obsessed with it to the point where I had some like really low points. Um, I actually found myself in Target one day um, in the scale aisle by myself thinking, I wonder if I could step on one of these scales without anybody knowing. Like, and I felt like a crazy person. I didn't actually do it. Um, but even just the fact that I was having this mental battle with myself because I felt like I, I wanted to weigh myself and I wanted to know so badly, but I didn't want anybody else to know that I had given up on it. Um, so I made it through that day, but I also felt extreme anxiety whenever I would be going over anybody else's house because I know that there's a scale in their house. And I was thinking when I would go to my sister's house or my mom's house or my friend's house thinking, huh, I wonder how I could, I wonder if I could, um, step on their scale and find out what I weighed. So clearly this wasn't actually doing for me <laughs> what I wanted it to do for me, which was to stop caring about what I weighed. It actually made me even more obsessed with what I weighed. And also I found that I just moved from um, one obsessive way of measuring with the scale to switching to measuring myself with a body tape measure even more regularly. Like I was measuring my waist every single day, like kind of obsessing over that number. So it didn't actually um, set me free in any way, shape or form. If anything, I think it actually made it worse. So I did go uh, a full 90 days without having a scale in my house. Um, but I only went about 45 days without weighing myself. I totally stepped on the scale at my sister's house one day and then probably like a week later at my mom's house. And, um, you know, I wasn't happy with the number either. Like it didn't, it, it wasn't relieving in any way, shape or form. It just felt even worse. Um, and so with knowing this about myself that I took a lot of like comfort or control for my anxiety and just having that reassurance every day of like, it's okay, this is what you weigh. And like, it was really very much a control thing. I think probably a lot of people can relate to this. Um, but because I was so anxious already with all of the other things going on to try to deprive myself of that coping mechanism actually made things a lot worse for me. So I I did um, purchase another scale in after about 90 days and um, decided that I was just going to stop trying to do that um, because it wasn't working for me and just let myself weigh myself when I felt like weighing myself. At first I told myself, okay, well, you can keep it in the house, but you're only going to do it once a week and yada, yada. I was really trying to moderate it. Um, but I found myself still wanting to weigh myself every single day. So I knew it didn't make any sense. Uh, it, for me at the time, it didn't make any sense to weigh myself every day because and I, and I would tell myself this information and I would share it with my clients all the time, um, the scale can fluctuate. Like you should take it with a grain of salt because it can fluctuate for so many different reasons. I'll just share a couple with you guys in case this is something where you're like, really? I, I didn't know that. Like I thought it was just like, I truly had gained fat. Like, no, it's probably just water weight. It fluctuates. First of all, it fluctuates based on time of day. Um, like you could weigh like four to five more pounds at night than you did in the morning. And that's just because of water weight. It's not because you actually gained fat throughout the course of the day. It all has to do with um, gravity and how much water is in your body and so on and so forth. So overnight, your body uh, lets go of all of that water weight and you pee it out first thing in the morning. And so you're going to be at your lowest weight of the day first thing in the morning, um, completely naked after you've had um, 
uh, bowel movement preferably, um, that would be the ideal condition in which you're gonna weigh yourself if, you're, if you do choose to weigh yourself. That would be the ideal circumstance to do that. Um, so because the scale really can fluctuate at different times of the day, and also it can fluctuate from day to day depending upon a myriad of things, and it usually has to do with water retention. So hydration levels could be one thing. If you just drank like 16 ounces of water, like that actually weighs something when it goes into your body. So hydration levels matter, um, electrolyte levels matter. So um, essentially like sodium um, can cause water retention. So Every time I go out for Mexican food, um, even though I ate keto foods, low carb foods, I was just focusing on protein and low carb veggies, um, I gained weight because of water retention, because it was filled with a lot of sodium, same thing with Chinese food or probably anything else like that. So that can cause the scale to go up. Um, food residue in your gut and how recently did you have your last bowel movement? So if you, if it's been two days since you've had a bowel movement, yeah, well, as soon as you have a bowel movement, you're gonna release a couple of pounds. And constipation can also be a thing that a lot of people struggle with in the beginning on keto. That has to do with an electrolyte imbalance. So take your electrolyte supplements. Um, but yeah, so when's the last time that you had a bowel movement? Um, carb intake. So if you recently consumed more carbs than you normally do, for every one gram of carbohydrate that you consume, your body actually holds onto four grams of water. So you didn't gain five pounds overnight just because yesterday was Thanksgiving. It is just water weight. Um, exercise. So if you just had a hard workout, exercise um, can cause inflammation in the body. So if you're lifting weights or you're doing some type of intense physical exercise, your body, um, you're going to experience little tears in your muscle, which you do want because that's um, when the body repairs itself. That's how you build muscle. That's how you get stronger. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But the way that the body heals itself is by um, is through inflammation. So it's sending all of your blood cells over to those muscles to help repair it. And part of the byproduct is water retention. So that's another reason why um, a lot of people, you know, if you had like a leg day, like the next day, you're going to step on the scale and you're probably going to see that the scale has gone up by a pound. But obviously that's just water weight. Menstrual cycle. Yes, this is a big thing. I mean, keto or not, um, always right before my period, I gain three pounds of water weight like clockwork and then it comes right back off. So yeah, and depending upon what time of the month it is, like even during your ovulation, you could see a spike on the scale because of water weight. So it's all hormonal. Um, and so hormones affect water retention in the body and it has nothing to do with you gaining fat. It's just water weight, um, stress and sleep, same thing. Um, so if you're under a lot of stress or if you had a poor night of sleep that does same thing it causes stress in the body it causes your stress hormone cortisol to rise and that causes water retention so i mean that's like seven or eight things <laughs> that i just listed that can actually influence and impact the scale um and it can feel really defeating um it can feel really confusing like why did i gain weight i was so good yesterday or i, I followed my plan yesterday i did everything perfect yesterday um, I work with a lot of clients who um, they don't want to weigh themselves every day. They find that to be maybe more triggering. And so totally respect that. Um, maybe they weigh once a week. And so if you choose to weigh once a week, I think that's great. Um, the best time to do it is probably the middle of the week to the end of the week. So we tend to eat more over the on the weekends. Um, so even if you're eating still low carb, you're probably just eating bigger meals. Like maybe you're going out to eat or maybe you're indulging a little bit more than you normally would. That's normal. Uh, you know, totally fine. We're just off of our normal rhythm and routine. So that's true for most people. So, um, giving yourself a couple of days to just kind of rebalance that water weight. Um, so wait until Wednesday, if you're going to be the type of a person that only weighs in once a week and probably Fridays would be the best time to weigh in on Friday morning, right before the weekend is probably going to be your lowest weight of the week. However, with that being said, I do have a lot of clients that weigh in once a week, either on Thursdays or Fridays. And sometimes they'll send me their weight for the week and it won't be down at all from where it was exactly a week ago. And so they can get really frustrated. They can feel really discouraged and they'll say, what should I do? You know, should I change a strategy, yada, yada. And so without fail, I always say, let's wait two days and weigh again, um, because you probably just caught yourself on a quote unquote off day um, for any of those reasons, you know? 
what's going on with your menstrual cycle? When was your last bowel movement? What did you eat yesterday? You know, all of these things can influence the scale. So I say, give it another two days. And always they are down like a pound, a, at least a pound from where they were two days ago. And they feel so relieved. So there's no need to freak out or change up your strategies or do anything else. Um, if you're going to be a person that weighs in once a week, just check it again a couple of days later before you make any changes. Um, and if you still have not lost anything, you know, and it, it probably wasn't just an off day, then you can kind of examine things. But don't freak out about the daily fluctuations in the scale. So... Um, Kind of back to uh, knowing this this information and how information can be power. I knew this at the time. And so I knew the daily fluctuations really didn't matter. Um, yet, I still found myself getting upset about the daily fluctuations. Like you could know it, right? And then the way that you feel is a whole nother thing. And a lot of that was really habitual, right? Meaning I had spent my whole life stepping on the scale every single day, looking at that number, and then either feeling elated or feeling pissed off, <laughs> like cussing at the scale. <laughs> I, I'm sure the people out there can relate, right? Like you get so upset. So you either feel really great about yourself or you feel really horrible about yourself. And then it would influence not only how I would feel about myself, but actually what I would do that day. So like if the scale was up higher, you know, you start to have those disordered thoughts of like, oh, well, I need to restrict today to try to make up for it. Um, even though you really probably shouldn't. It, there's a logical explanation. It's just water weight. Just get back to your normal rhythm and routine. It's going to come off. It's going to be fine. But, you know, you can experience those thoughts of disordered eating or you can experience the temptation to just hide out. Um, you know, you went up a pound or two pounds and that's going to influence what you wear that day. Like, to that's been me. You know, like, I understand that feeling. It sucks. It's It, it doesn't make any sense, but you've been doing it for so long that those are the thoughts that recur in your mind because it's just, these are the autopilot things that you've been thinking your whole life. And even though you are now on this new journey of self-care through your nutrition, those old limiting beliefs can really creep back up. It doesn't matter who you are. And so that would creep back up for me. Um, the temptation to hide out, like wanting, wanting to cancel plans. Like if you were planning on going to the beach, you don't want to wear a bathing suit. You want to cancel. Um, you just don't want to see people. Um, you want to wear like baggy clothes, like all of those things. So like this is showing you that um, you have a disordered relationship with the scale. And that was what I was struggling with. And that was something that I really wanted to heal. So I came across another um, keto coach who I would really recommend that you follow. Her name is Rachel Gregory. Um, and you can follow her um, on Instagram. I'll put um, her actual link in the show notes later. Um, but it's, I believe it's rachelgregory.cns and she's a keto coach for women. And, um, I was listening to one of her podcasts. Um, her podcast is called met flex and chill. Um, it's all about metabolic flexibility. So that's another really great podcast that I would recommend. And she was actually talking about how she weighs herself every day. And I instantly became really intrigued because I want to hear from other people about they're doing it and they're doing it successfully or they're doing it at least neutrally. Like it's, it, it's okay to weigh yourself every day. So I was like, huh, let me, let me listen to this. And she was saying that she does this for herself and with her clients is she actually has them weigh every single day and then taking the average for the entire week is how she would measure progress with her clients. And instantly I was like, Yes, duh, <laughs> that makes so much sense. But it was like a light bulb moment for me um, that I could uh, actually weigh myself every single day and care less about the daily number on the scale by zooming out and focusing up on the weekly average. Hey there, Sanjas, um, 2217. I see your question here. Does anyone with type one diabetes do keto. Yes, definitely. Um, and you can get some more great information on the website dietdoctor.com. And thanks for your question. If anybody else has any questions, please feel free to put it in the feed. So um, back to this light bulb moment of just, okay, that makes so much sense. Like it's still okay to weigh yourself every day, but the way that I am going to stop caring about weighing myself every day, or the way that I'm going to stop caring about that specific number on a daily basis is actually by just taking the weekly average. And so for me, this was like life changing, totally helped. I was still able to keep my habit of weighing myself every day. Um, and for me that, that helped me. 
um, that I didn't have to give that up and freak out not knowing what I was weighing. But at the same time, it um, removed the um, emphasis on the daily number that I could actually just neutralize that daily number by saying it's just data. It doesn't matter what I weigh today. It matters what I weigh this week as my weekly average. And so that's been something that has been so, so, so helpful for me. And I would actually say that is the thing that healed my relationship with the scale. I thought it would be throwing my scale away, but really that just turned out to be avoidance for me, which increased my anxiety. And so um, instead of avoidance, just facing it head on and actually neutralizing it through, through exposure and reframing what that number means um, was actually what truly healed my relationship with the scale. And I still, I started, I started doing that probably last summer and I still do weigh myself every single day. And I can honestly say that it doesn't matter to me. Like I know all of those reasons logically that come up is like, okay, well you probably just, you know, you had an Mexican food last night or, you know, how was my bowel movement yesterday? Or all those things that actually, um, are logical reasons I can actually let them sink in now instead of, because there's no more emotional attachment to the daily number or the daily fluctuation. I've stopped canceling plans. I still go to the beach and put on my bathing suit when I weigh a pound or two more. It's been really, really healing for me. And um, it's also been really healing for some of the clients that I work with. Um, and I was able to share with them my story of how this actually neutralized the experience for me through the constant exposure and just reframing the meaning of it. Okay, so we have another question from Sanjas again. I realized with intermittent fasting, I lost my periods to really um, scanty and in spots. Maybe I did it wrong and was stressed. Yeah, definitely. Um, with intermittent fasting, I would say let that be something that comes really naturally to you because one of the um, beautiful things about keto and ketosis is that it suppresses your appetite. And so you don't have to um, force yourself to fast for long periods of time you can actually just start to trust your body intuitively. Um, and there will be, if you're a woman who is cycling, then there will be different times of the month when it will be a lot easier to fast and different times of the month when it will be a lot harder to fast. Like you truly will have higher levels of hunger because your body is doing different hormonal processes throughout the month and this requires energy, like literally extra calories, and your body will prompt you with hunger signals. So if you've ever noticed, um, hmm, why do I wake up sometimes and I'm not hungry till noon, and then other times I am hungry at like 9 a.m., your body is speaking to you. And so I think that's one of the real beautiful things about eating low carb or eating keto is that it actually can allow you to practice intuitive eating and to, to tune into your body and that you can trust what your body is saying to you. Um, so you're asking, can a very thin person do keto and intermittent fasting? And if one does, can we sometimes eat complex carbs near periods? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can definitely treat different times of the month. You should adjust your nutrition at different times of the month. Um, so if you're a very thin person, um, yeah, you can definitely eat keto. Keto is just restricting carbohydrates. It's not restricting calories per se. Sometimes people naturally end up restricting their calories when they are eating keto just because of that natural appetite suppression. But if you're trying to maintain your weight and not lose weight, you probably should just um, as an experiment, log your foods for about a week and just see naturally how many calories are you eating per day. And in the calculator, on, uh, I like to use Carb Manager, you can set your weight to maintenance and it'll show you how many calories you should be eating to maintain your weight. And if you find that you're constantly falling below that just because you're not hungry, you actually might have to um, intentionally push yourself to eat a little bit more if you're a naturally thin person trying to do keto. Um, so I think um, it's still a really healthy way to eat, especially if you're focusing on protein and you're eating whole foods. Um, but there's nothing wrong with bringing in whole food carbohydrates um, if you're at your weight goal or if you're not um, you know, unable, some people have, um, they become insulin resistant. Um, and that can be really common with obesity and being overweight. So if you're not insulin resistant, meaning you can metabolize carbohydrates just fine, um, and you are at a healthy weight, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with from time to time enjoying whole food carbohydrates like fruit or sweet potatoes or white rice or um, quinoa, you know, whole grains, things like that if you want to. Now, if that's something that you personally have an intolerance to and you feel crappy 
then don't do that. You know, but there, there's probably some type of complex carbs that your body doesn't have a reaction to that if you want to enjoy it from time to time, totally go for it. Um, so as far as intermittent fasting goes with women who are cycling, um, if you are extremely overweight, you might not notice any kind of um, negative impact for you practicing intermittent fasting every single day of the month, like clockwork, maybe 16, eight or so eating within an eight hour window, and you might not notice any negative effects. But if you are at your, um, close to your goal weight or at your goal weight or even underweight, um, practicing intermittent fasting and restricting calories can have negative impacts on your hormones and losing your period is a, is a vital sign that something is wrong. Um, so your menstrual cycle is basically a, like another vital sign if you are a woman. So that means that your body is too stressed out and you probably need to um, stop intermittent fasting and increase your calories a little bit until you get your period back. That would be what I would um, recommend. So yeah, I think this all kind of ties in with um, treating your nutrition as a self-care practice. So this is not about following rules. This is not about subscribing to any kind of religious or dogmatic thinking in terms of what you're eating. Um, this is not saying, you know, I'm keto or I'm paleo um, or whatever else you want to slap on as a label. You don't need to find the right diet or follow the right rules. You need to find what works for you. You need to create what works best for you as a practice of self-care. And that can be the same thing in terms of how often you weigh yourself. Um, so let weighing yourself be a practice of self-care. If you find um, that never weighing yourself and just throwing your scale away is truly the best practice of self-care for you. I am so all for that. And I don't regret doing that, um, a year and a half ago. I'm actually really glad that I did it and really glad that I experienced it because I was able to find that that's not something that worked for me. It was something that I had as a fantasy in my mind for a really long time. Like someday I'm going to throw my scale away and I'm going to be free. And so I did it. I tried it. It was a really good guess. It was a really great experiment. And I learned that actually that didn't work for me. And and what has worked for me now, like I was mentioning before, is actually to just go ahead and weigh myself every day, take the weekly average and realize that the daily fluctuations truly don't matter. And that's how I was actually able to neutralize it and remove the anxiety and remove any um, measurements of personal self-worth from the entire experience and just truly treat it as a neutral number. It's just data. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me today. And thank you for all of these um, great questions. So, um, you know, your relationship with the scale is probably going to vary based upon your personality and your temperament. And as a keto coach for women, I actually call myself a self-care keto coach because I believe that the way that I eat keto for me specifically is a form of self-care. And for everybody, the way that you choose to fuel your body, what you eat is a form of self-care. It is the most fundamental form of self-care is meeting your physiological needs through giving yourself nutrition. That's self-care. I mean, bubble baths and pedicures and all these things are awesome. And I love them too. But if we're trying to do those things and we're neglecting our nutrition, I mean, we're missing the point. Like everybody has these basic fundamental needs, sleep, food, regular temperature, housing, you know, all of these things that like everybody has basic human dignity and basic human needs. And here we are trying to, you know, practice our affirmations or whatever it is, but we're eating total, total garbage. Like you can't affirm your way out of feeling hungover from drinking too much last night. You can't affirm your way. You can't bubble bath your way out of, um, you know, feeling extremely bloated because you ate something that your body has a negative reaction to. Um, so, yeah, take that in mind and whatever that means to you in terms of um, practicing self-care through what you eat and through your relationship with the scale, that's the real point behind it, right? Um, but for you, you might be the type of personality that feels best, never weighing yourself. You might be the type of personality that feels best. I'm just going to weigh myself once a week. And sure, I'll take that into consideration. If I see a number that, um, you know, I'm unhappy with, I'll pop on again two days later, just realizing that it could have been an off day. You might be the type of person that really thrives by weighing yourself every single day. Um, and then just taking that 
weekly average. So it really is just based on, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? So try and find out what works best for you. And as a coach, I love to just be able to hold space for different people with different temperaments. I won't say that my way of doing keto or my way of my relationship with the scale is what everybody should do. Um, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're all different. So you need to find what works best for you. Um, if that's something that you're interested in learning a little bit more about yourself and your personality and your temperament and your strengths and your values and really finding a way to make keto fit for you in celebration of who you already are instead of trying to change yourself to fit some rigid set of rules. I have created a resource that I am so excited to share with you guys, and it is called the Self-Care Keto Guided Mindset Journal. And it contains 10 of the powerful mindset shift exercises that I have used successfully with my clients over the last four years to help them transform their lives and to transform their beliefs surrounding food, weight, and body image. And I'm so excited to share this with you guys. Um, and if you're interested, you can purchase that over on my website, theketofit.com slash journal. And it's available as an instant download and it is easy to use, it is printable, um, and it's downloadable. So you're gonna get it right away um, and you'll get instant access to be able to start working on those exercises. I love that it is um, you know, printable and downloadable because what I really intended for is that you would do these exercises over and over and over again, um, instead of just, you know, putting it in a hard copy book that you can buy off of Amazon or whatever. Um, because once you fill it in, um, well, then it's done, it's written in already. And I don't want you to do it just one time. I want you to do it over and over and over again. So you can always just print off a fresh copy from the download that you have and repeat these exercises over and over again. Um, some of the exercises that you might want to repeat are like how to um, dismantle um, a toxic belief that you have. So you're going to run up against these over and over again, and each belief will be different. Um, you know, maybe the belief is my body is fighting me. And so the turnaround could be, no, my body is serving me. Maybe the belief is my DNA determines my destiny. Um, you know, that you can turn these things around, dismantle them, see where they really came from. There's another great exercise in there that you're gonna wanna do over and over and over again about how to bounce back from emotional eating. So there's a series of questions that you can check in with yourself and ask yourself, like, what was I truly feeling? What was I truly trying to numb out from? Uh, what did I really need in that moment? How can I give that to myself next time? Um, how can I prevent myself from getting into this same negative emotion that I feel over and over and over again? Do I need to set a boundary in my life? So every time you have an emotional eating episode, you can go back and print that off and check in with yourself. So again, I'd love for you guys to check this out. It's over on my website, theketofit.com slash journal. You can purchase it for $39 or you can also do PayPal's um, installment plan. It's totally interest-free and you can make four payments of $9.75. There's also PayPal credit. Um, as long as you pay that off over six months, it's totally interest-free. I really wanted to create something accessible and affordable for every single person to be able to work together with me. Um, I love being here for you guys, specifically as a keto coach for women, because I really believe that our relationship with food, weight, and body image is a unique one as a woman um, in the world today. And so I've been able to heal this within myself through following keto and healing my body and healing my hormones and getting off of the blood sugar roller coaster. That is what actually gave me the energy to go do the mindset work of transforming these beliefs. So, and this can happen for you too. And this is what I do. Um, if you are interested in digging deeper and working together with a coach, um, I have some great news. If you purchase the book, um, you will be granted exclusive access to go through the book with a group of women for fall group coaching. And that's gonna be starting up the Thursday after Labor Day and running through the week right before Thanksgiving. So you will be able to go through the exercises and um, talk about them as a group and make friends and find accountability and just um, be in relationship with other women who also are on a self-care um, weight loss journey. So if that's something that you're interested in, the first step is to just go ahead and purchase the book and then I'll send you more information for how you can sign up for the group coaching. If groups are not your thing, um, I also work with clients one-on-one -on -one and I do have some openings available. So if you're interested, I offer a totally free curiosity call where we can talk over the phone for about 20 to 30 minutes and I would love to just get to know you, hear your story and tell you a little bit more about coaching and whether you decide to move forward or not, I will just um, give you some custom keto advice. I would love to bless you with some information, like hearing what you're doing right now, what are your struggles and give you some tips 
Um, so whether you want to move forward or not, um, that's just totally free. Advice is always free. And I know it can be really overwhelming trying to figure out what's going to work best for you. Um, you know, should I do keto? Should I do intermittent fasting? Should I do cyclical keto? Should I do dirty keto, clean keto? What the heck? You know, what are my macros? All of these things um, that can feel so overwhelming. So um, that's just a free offer that I love to put out with anybody. Free 30 minute phone call where we can talk about coaching and then also give you some free custom keto advice. To sign up for that, you can go to bit.ly slash free curiosity call, or you can also sign up on my website, theketofit.com. You can also just send me a direct message here on Instagram. You can send it to me right now. Um, or I'm also over on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn. I'm at the keto fit. You can email me the keto fit at gmail.com. I would really, really love to connect with you and in any way that feels appropriate for you right now. If you want to start with the book, you want to do group coaching, you want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I offer a variety of formats and um, different levels of time and financial commitments for different people. So again, um, thank you so much for tuning in with me. My name is Jess. I am a self-care keto coach. I help women lose weight with a keto diet and a self-care mindset. Thank you for tuning in with me. If you're listening later on the podcast, um, if you leave a rating and review on iTunes for the self-care keto podcast, that self-care keto podcast, you will be entered to win a free copy of my self-care keto guided mindset journal, which is a $39 value. So all you have to do is hop over and leave a rating and review on iTunes. Um, I'm really trying to grow my podcast to a larger audience and your review will really help me do that. So thank you so much for taking the time. And I hope that everybody has a fantastic week. Uh, reminder, I will not be with you all next week on the podcast or here on IGTV because I'm going to Disney uh, with my family and I will be back the week after that. And I'm so excited. We have some fun episodes coming up. I'm going to be doing some um, interviews with other guests and I'm going to be sharing some um podcast where I was actually a guest on some other podcasts as well. So we've got some fun, exciting things coming up in the future. All right, guys, thanks again. Have a wonderful week. Take care.